dia, pessoal! Aqui é a Adriana Rimmer para mais uma live do Cambly. E aí, tudo bem com vocês? Todo mundo tranquilo? Todo mundo em casa? Como é que tá? Bom, vamos começar hoje falando sobre a sua última chance para participar da Best November do Cambly. Gente, olha só, ontem foi a Black Friday e ontem o Cambly bombou com muita gente entrando na nossa comunidade, muita gente entrando no Cambly, muito bacana. Mas você que ainda não faz parte do Cambly, muita atenção, hoje é o último dia, sua última chance. Então é o seguinte, era para terminar ontem, né? Mas vamos lá, hoje não vai rolar. 50% de desconto nos planos anuais, tá? O que significa que dá até 65 reais mensais, olha que coisa, muito bom, né? Então preste atenção no código, eu já coloquei aqui na tela para vocês, código adultos, best lives, tá? E o código kids, best live kids, não é plural, best live kids, ok? Então, beleza, vamos começar? Vamos lá, quero apresentar para vocês, aliás, muita gente já conhece ele, né? O Samuel James. Good morning, Samuel. Good morning, bom dia. Good It's a pleasure to be here with you, as always. <risos> Thank gente, you so much for inviting me again. Wow, that's so much fun. Gente, o Samuel, ele mora em São Francisco e ele também é músico e, e ele está aprendendo português. Você está aprendendo português, né, Samuel? Sim, Samuel. estou estudando português. Uhum. Eu gosto muito de sua cultura e a gente de Brasil, do uh, Brasil. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Good job. Anyway, um, today we're going to talk about phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs. Yeah. And then Samuel came up with an idea to talk about phrasal verbs related to the pandemia which is a moment we're living now and we, we are facing, we're finding new verbs and new sentences and new ways of putting things. And it's very interesting. So you created a text for us uh, with all these phrasal verbs and then you're going to be explaining them to us, right? Yep, I have a special story I made just for you all today. Mm -hmm. Phrasal verb, phrasal verbs for the pandemic. Ooh, uh-huh. So you're going to so, share your screen for us? Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. So everyone can read along. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Mm -hmm. So can you read it? Uh -huh. So first of all, Adrian, mm -hmm. may, Adriana, maybe everyone doesn't know what phrasal verbs are. Mm -hmm. So what are phrasal verbs? Phrasal verbs are simply a verb plus another word or two. And they're usually idiomatic, which means they're common in spoken English. For example, the first sentence here. Since COVID-19 broke out earlier this year, governments around the world have ordered people to social distance, to keep away from each other at least six feet, and to wear a face mask. Uh -huh. The first phrasal verb we have here is to break out. Broke out. Uh-huh. So yep. how would you explain a broke out? To break out can be like to to erupt, something that just that uh spreads quickly. In this case, it's a, the virus. Mm -hmm. The virus broke out, it became a contagion, started like spreading all over. Is it like exploding? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, around the world uh, have uh, ordered people to social distance. Social distance, is it a, a phrasal verb? Yes, this is an example of how our language constantly is evolving. This is a new phrasal verb that's mm -hmm. come about from the pandemic. Oh. So, so to social distance is to maintain distance, physical distance, from other people. So in this case, distance is not a noun. Distance became a verb. Yes, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would think to practice social distance, but now distance be became a verb. So to social distance, distanciar. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, that makes sense. Uh -huh. Wonderful. And in other words, it's also to saying to keep away, to stay away, mm -hmm. to maintain distance from okay. each other. Uh -huh. 
Okay. Uh, so can you go on with the text? Okay. Mm -hmm. Has anyone you know come down with COVID? Mm. Come down with. Come down with. How would you? That say? means to fall ill with. Mm. So like this this season right now it's the flu season in the united states winter november december mm -hmm. and many people are coming down with the flu hold on to come down but are there other uh meanings to come down or is this the only meaning yes there are other meetings to come down like uh, if you say i'm going up to the mountains I will be coming down from the mountains tomorrow. Mm -hmm. okay. But in this case, to come down with is usually to fall ill with something, to, to get some kind of uh, uh, illness. Mm -hmm. I see. So, And then uh, on the other hand, there's come up with. Mm -hmm. So until someone comes up with a vaccine, it looks like the lockdown will drag on. Ooh. Okay, come up. It's like appearing, right? Comes up. Come up with is like to invent something. To invent. So we're waiting on scientists to come up with the solution to this problem. Mm -hmm. And um, lockdown. Lockdown is also, it's a synonym for quarantine. Mm -hmm. So it can be used as a noun or as a verb. Like, for example, the mayor says we need to lock down the city. Mm -hmm. Or everyone is in lockdown. That's using it as a noun. Oh, so it can be a verb or a noun. And drag on? Drag on means to continue, to persist. It just keeps going and going and going. Now, this quarantine, this pandemic has been dragging on for months and months and months. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Drag on. Okay. <laughs> so let's go on with the text. Okay, uh -huh. many businesses have closed down mm. and many people are being laid off. Okay, let's see what that is. So closed down means to shut down. Mm -hmm. When uh, some store goes out of business, that means they've closed down. They're no longer open for business. And laid off means uh, losing jobs. People are being fired. They're they're losing their their employment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to continue, uh -huh. but I have hope that we are going to pull through. Oh. So pull through means get better. We'll survive. We'll overcome. Mm -hmm. We'll pull through. Pull through. So don't freak out, even if you run out of toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, Americans are so concerned about toilet paper. <laughs> I don't know what it is about the toilet paper, but yes, in the U.S., we've had several incidents where people are so worried they're going to run out of toilet paper. They, <laughs> <laughs> they bought all of it from the stores. Yeah. So freak out is like go crazy. Don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Freak and, out to have a panic attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to go crazy. Mm -hmm. And even if you run out of toilet paper, run out of means if you don't have any more, right? Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah, to not have any more, to be out of something. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, there's already a question here. Luana, oh. could you put the drag on in some other context? In other example? Drag on? I probably, but I think the most common context is this one where something just keeps continuing and continuing. We're waiting for it to end, but it just won't end. 
So maybe you can say, oh, uh, this situation is dragging on and on. Or the teacher, his lecture is dragging on and on and on. Uh, yeah. So it's usually kind of complaining about something. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And Maira, can we use pull through when we when we talk about overcoming something? Yes. Yep. That's exactly what pull through means. Overcoming. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, let's go on with the text. But that was a, that was a great question. Thank you so much. Yeah. Try to stay in if you can. Stay in means stay inside. Keep inside the house or your home mm-hmm. or in a building. Mm-hmm. Clean up and wash your hands often. Mm-hmm. What's the difference between clean? Because in Brazil, we just say clean, stay clean, clean up. Why do you, why do you need the up? Clean up, it's just a little more active. Mm-hmm. So uh, clean up is just like tidy up. Mm-hmm. make sure everything is in their place, you know, make sure everything's well put together, well arranged. Mm-hmm. It's just a, a little more, um, more interesting way to say, to stay clean or to clean things. Natalia, sa- Natalia says, thank you, Tudor Samuel. Great job. Great tips. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Natalia. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I think this is this is a more interesting way to learn phrasal verbs. Mm-hmm. These are very relevant yeah. uh, phrasal verbs. Okay. Mm-hmm. Clean up and wash your hands often. Mm-hmm. Wipe down surfaces and door handles with sanitizing wipes. Question. Wipe down. So why not wipe up since you say clean up? That is a very good question, That's a Adriana. very good question. And <laughs> you need, that you is need the mystery the of the English language. Yeah, it's a mystery. Okay. <laughs> wipe down. Maybe um, because when when you wipe something, you know, you need to wipe down to uh-huh, wipe like, it off. Like here, like doing this. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Clean up. So wipe down surfaces. That that's like down. to clean or dry something by rubbing it. Mm-hmm. Down. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> so wipe down surfaces and door handles with sanitizing wipes. Mm-hmm. Stock up on hand sanitizer and face masks. So stock up is to buy a whole bunch of supplies of something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But don't go crazy with hoarding supplies. So what's hoarding supplies? That's another question. Hoarding supplies is when you have too much of something. Mm -hmm. When you have way too too many, too much toilet paper that you you wouldn't even be able to use in a whole year, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's So it's going overboard. Uh Uh-huh. Even if you run out of... You know, uh, stop, uh, okay, hoarding supplies. Hoarding supplies is interesting because I know a lot of people ha- that have done that. Yeah, so we need to be thoughtful of other people mm-hmm. and not hoard any supplies. Mm-hmm. So we make sure that everyone has enough uh, face masks, enough hand sanitizer, mm-hmm. and toilet paper. Mm-hmm. So... Keep the people on the front lines in your prayers and stay safe, everybody. Mm -hmm. So keeping people in your prayers, that's a phrasal verb that means to to be thinking about someone, to pray for someone. Mm -hmm. And stay safe, that's another way to say take care. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. Uh, Rosana Fontinelli, clean up. Is it like doing a, a huge clean or just a little bit? A, a, a big fashion, a big one. <laughs> clean up uh-huh. as a noun is like a big clean. clean. Uh-huh. 
So oh, I hired a team of people to do a big cleanup mm-hmm. last week after there was an accident mm-hmm. on the highway. They did a big cleanup. But to say as a phrasal verb, to clean up, that's just that can be just I cleaned up my kitchen. I cleaned up. I tidied up the, the table. Mm-hmm. It can be a very small task. Oh, that's a good question. Uh-huh. Great question. No, the question was from Rosana. Muito bom, Rosana. Luana, what's the difference between bring up and bring on? Let's see. Bring um, up. Bring up is when you mention something in a conversation. Mm-hmm. Bring on is when you bring someone on board. So, Adriana, you brought me on this show today. I'm mm-hmm. so happy to, to be here. Uh, and during our talk, we're bringing up phrasal verbs. Mm-hmm. So we're mentioning, we're talking about phrasal verbs. Mm-hmm. That's, that's great. Thank you. Luana, what's the difference between give in and give out? Oh, I like, I like these questions. <laughs> give in. Uh-huh. Give in is like to give up. Give in is you you quit. Mm-hmm. So you don't have any more energy. Um, so it's to kind of lose lose faith, lose energy, give in, give up. Mm-hmm. is the same thing. Give out is a completely different, has a completely different meaning. It means like for Thanksgiving, we gave out meals to people who needed them. Donation. Give out. Yeah, it's like donate. Uh-huh. Like when you hand out flyers, it's always yes. handing out and, you know. Yeah, it's to distribute. physically hand out things to distribute. other people. Uh-huh. Distribute. Uh-huh. Distribute, yeah. Uh-huh. Hmm? Uh, Flora, what's the difference between cheer on and cheer up? Oh, cheer on and cheer up. They basically mean the same thing. Uh, However, they're both very positive ways. They're very friendly actions that you can do to help someone, to support someone. Mm -hmm. To cheer on is like, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. Uh And cheer up is when someone is sad and then you're trying to make them happy. Like, oh, don't be sad. It's okay. It'll be okay. You did such a good job. That's cheering up. So cheering on is like when you when you go to a soccer game and then you go yeah 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 okay yeah. and then cheer up. You just uh, you know handle the person. You, and... Yeah, if they lo- if their team lost the soccer game, then uh-huh. you're comforting them. Uh-huh. It's okay. You'll win next time. <laughs> <laughs> um, Luana, what's to come across? To come across is to encounter something so i came across this amazing story in a book i was reading last week Mm. so it's it's kind of like to discover or to encounter Mm -hmm. to come across okay but usually by accident or by uh happenstance it probably you probably weren't expecting it Mm -hmm. i see uh, another question from Miriam Almeida. What's the difference between come on and come on to someone? To come on. <laughs> <laughs> I love these examples. They're so good. So um, to come on, when you say come on to someone, you're, you're saying come on, like, let's go, let's go, mm-hmm. like hurry. And to come on to someone, that means you're flirting. Ooh. Yeah, you have some, like, romantic interests. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. And uh, let's see. let me take a look here on all the verbs uh, you said um, to break out. There's, oh, there's a, to break in. To break, you have break out and then to break in. Break in. So these are completely different. Mm -hmm. Break out is usually kind of like a medical term. 
-hmm. So referring to a virus, breaking out. But break in is usually talking about criminals when someone breaks into your home. It's totally different, huh? Totally different, yeah. (laughs) Another question here. Hang on and hang out. Hang on. You can say hang on or hang in there. To, to say, um, kind of like pull through. Mm-hmm. It's like a, a phrase of, of hope. Um, hang on, hang on, we're going to make it. Hang in there. Or also hang on uh, can be negative when you talk about someone who's kind of clingy to someone else, like, oh, uh, or just barely hanging on. So the the cat barely hung on to the tree when the wind was blowing. The cat almost fell off of the tree because the wind was blowing so hard. Mm-hmm. And hang out is a, is a fun way to say uh, socializing. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you want to hang out later? Mm-hmm. We can go watch a movie. Let's go hang out. So they're not hanging outside on a tree. <laughs> yeah, that too. That, yeah, just, but, oh, let's, uh, let's that, go that outside that and hang on a tree. Kind of macabre. That. Uh, <laughs> a monkey uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, you could say a monkey is hanging on a tree. Yeah, or uh, I, uh, you could say uh, we're going to hang out later. We're going to have fun. We're going to spend time together. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another question here. Let's see. Could you talk about Hold Back? I remember a song, Hold Back the Water. I got to find time to burn. Remember that? No, you don't remember that. (laughs) Back when train overdrive, hold back the water. You don't remember that? Oh, my God. No, I don't remember (laughs) Hold back. A lot of people here will remember that song. Don't you, hey, pessoal? Ninguém lembra disso, pelo amor de Deus. Hold back the water. Ninguém lembra disso. Vai. Okay. So what what, what do you think hold back means from that um, song? Hold back the water. It's like, um, let's postpone. Hold it back. Like, yes, exactly. Yeah, like like make sure that it doesn't, um, we, we need to keep it back. Mm-hmm. Or if you're talking about people in a conversation, oh, should I, I'm not going to hold back. I'm just going to let it all out. Mm. Like It's kind of like restraining yourself. Mm-hmm. Do you think uh, an artist should hold back or they should just express themselves completely? Oh, mm-hmm. so there's two meanings for holding back. One is like, Keep it away. The physical. And the other the one is like, away. I'm not going to, yeah, well, actually, it's keeping away. Keep it away, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It can be physically keeping something away or just kind of like restraining yourself emotionally. Okay. And here's payback. Gabriel, payback. Oh. So payback, this is mostly in In uh, colloquial English, this is mostly used as a noun. And payback is like revenge. Mm. I'm going to get my just desserts. I'm going to get my payback. If it's a noun, but but, but you can use it as a verb, right? Uh, As a verb. You get your payback. Yeah, you lent me money, Mm -hmm. I'll pay you back. Mm -hmm. I owe you $5, I'll pay you back. Don't worry about it. I'll pay you back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> These are great examples. Yeah. Keep them coming. Yeah, all right. We have so many people watching. Gente, muito legal. Quem tiver mais pergunta pode falar. E uh, what other phrasal verbs can you think of right now that we can use for our daily routine? Let's say... Um... So I have a couple examples. Mm-hmm. A couple more examples. Mm-hmm. Um, one popular uh, form of phrasal verbs is the verb plus the adverb, like Mm -hmm. to look up. To look up. So to look up is to look somewhere, to investigate, to find some information. So 
I'm going to look up a word in the dictionary. It's to do some research. Mm -hmm. research. Yeah, to do some research. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and yeah, go, go ahead. Another one could be a verb plus a preposition, mm -hmm. like to look after. Mm -hmm. So my friend is going on vacation for two weeks. She wants me to look after her cat mm -hmm. to take make care. sure that her cat is okay, uh -huh. to kind of take care of take someone care. or something. Uh -huh. To look and after. And there's another question here to warm up. Oh, to warm up. Mm -hmm. To warm up is like um, to get ready to prepare for something. Mm -hmm. uh, so I made sure to warm up uh, my voice before singing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before exercising, you do you you need to warm up, right? Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, warm up. Uh -huh. Before exercise. Okay. What about blow over, off, and up? Let me paste this here. Okay. To blow over. Mm -hmm. That's like uh, to finish. So we're waiting until this whole pandemic thing blows over. We're waiting until it finishes. Mm -hmm. To blow off. That means uh ignore to disregard mm -hmm. oh i have an appointment tomorrow but i'm gonna blow it off i don't i don't really want to go to that appointment mm -hmm. and to blow up that's to f for something to explode mm -hmm. explode uh-huh mm -hmm. oh that's that's great so uh do you have any more uh verse? Let's see. Yeah, I ha I mean, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh -huh. um, here, let's find some more good ones. Oh, I have a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, this goes along with the one that the student suggested about to come on to, <laughs> like flirting. <laughs> so um, I might be coming on to someone if I ask someone out. Ask somebody out, that's to invite on a date. Uh huh. Yeah. So that. Brian asked Judy out to dinner and a movie. Uh huh. Now, during COVID, it's kind of tough to ask people out. Yeah. I, I wonder how single people do it. I have no yeah. idea. <laughs> Must be really hard. <laughs> so, um, uh, what else? Um, let me see here. Another one, um, to ask around. And that means to ask many people the same question. So, uh, have you heard about Cambly's new live lessons? Oh, yeah, I've asked around. I've heard about that. Mm -hmm. Ask around, yeah. And what else? To break down, break down uh -huh. can mean a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. It can mean to divide something into smaller parts. Like, okay, this is a big lesson. Let's break it down into small pieces. Mm -hmm. So it's more manageable. Mm -hmm. Or to break down can be to get upset. Oh, I had a breakdown. I was so exhausted. I was so stressed out. Mm -hmm. I broke down. Or the car broke down yesterday. Mm -hmm. It ran out of gas. <laughs> uh, we have another one. Have on and have over. Oh, have over mm -hmm. means to invite someone to your house. So, oh, I would love to have you over tomorrow. Let, mm -hmm. Let's uh, have dinner together. Mm -hmm. And have on is talking about clothes. Clothes. So, uh -huh. oh, make sure you have a sweater on mm -hmm. or make sure in Brazil right now it's pretty hot, right? Mm -hmm. So make sure you have something light on, maybe a tank top uh -huh. so you don't get too hot. <laughs> okay. Well, Samuel, thank you so much. This was so much fun. All right. So um, 
I, I need to talk about the, the best November again because people can't miss this promotion, this sale. So let me talk about this. Gente, deixa eu lembrar para vocês, para a gente finalizar, eu tenho que falar para vocês do Best November, porque é a última oportunidade de vocês participarem. São 50% de desconto nos planos anuais. Vou colocar aqui, aliás, já está aqui, olha, na tela, o código para adultos, Best Lives, e o código para Kids, Best Life Kids, ok? Não percam essa oportunidade, são 50% de desconto nos planos anuais, 50%. Chegar a 65% mensais. Não pode perder, né? Thank you, Samuel. Thank, Thank you so you. much. I'll see you next time. Ok. So... Ups. Bom, ele caiu porque já deu o nosso tempo aqui. Mas, gente, muito obrigada. Até semana que vem. Valeu. Não percam a promoção Best November que está acabando. Um beijo. Até semana que vem. Valeu.